So what I wanted to show you in this video is a really helpful result for when we have elastic collisions um, that allows you to solve for, you know, velocities after the collision. The problem with um, elastic collisions is we have two conditions that we know that are true. We have um, the conservation of kinetic energy, which basically says that the amount of kinetic energy that we had started with is the same as what we end with. So um, in this particular situation, we're also going to look at something very specific, as we did in the other video that was posted. Uh, we have two objects, object A and object B, are going to collide. We are going to make this a one-dimensional um, problem, so everything's going to move along the x-axis here. Uh, the initial situation is body, uh, uh, body B is at rest, and body A is going to run into it with its initial velocity. So considering that, our initial kinetic energy is 1 half ma va 1x squared. And then after the collision, of course, we assume that both objects will be moving. So we have the kinetic energy of object A and object B. And so that's one of the conditions for an elastic collision. The other one is conservation of momentum. And that would be that the initial momentum, of course, is equal to the final momentum. And so these are like two expressions that we can use to help us solve for our unknowns. The problem is, is the kinetic energy expression um, can lead to some difficult um, algebra because the velocities are squared and we're trying to find the velocity. So honestly, these are not that helpful um, to use these two conditions together. So we're looking for something that is a little bit more helpful and doesn't give us so much trouble algebraically. So we're going to remember that we use equation one was conservation of kinetic energy and equation two was conservation of momentum. All right, so we're going to go to our next slide. So we're going to rearrange. We're going to rearrange equation one. Which was. We're going to solve for the final. B. And we actually can factor the right-hand side because it's a different of squares, which is what we want to do. And so this one I'm going to call 1a. 
And then I'm going to rearrange the conservation of momentum to give me 2A, which would be MB BB 2X is equal to MA BA 1X minus MA BA 2X. And I'm going to factor out the VA. Now if I do that, so I have this equation, I'm going to take equation 1a and divide it by equation 2a. And what happens is we can do some factoring, and we're left with this result, which actually you may have seen in one of the previous, in that previous video. And so this is a result that we're going to use. But we're going to look at it in a little bit different way. So if we take, rearrange that, we got VB2X minus VA2X is equal to VA1X. Now what this is, is this is the velocity of B relative to A after the collision. So by finding the difference between the two velocities, you're really finding their relative velocity. And this is minus the relative velocity of B relative to A before the collision. Because remember, the reason that we don't see the velocity of B initially, we don't have a VB1x because it was zero. What we've found is for this particular situation, the relative velocity before and after the collision has the same magnitude but opposite sign. And this is actually a really important result one that we're going to use for all one-dimensional elastic collisions. Because the idea is that you might think, well, we solved this for a very special case where object B wasn't moving initially. But think about the fact that if we observed this whole thing happen, but we were in a moving frame of reference, that is, we were like just moving by with a constant velocity, then object B would no longer be motionless. But the thing is, is because we would be in a frame of reference moving with a constant velocity, while the individual velocities of A and B would be different, their relative velocities wouldn't change. We would still get the same results. And so we can just modify this for the case where initially both objects are moving, and this becomes the relative velocity after the collision is equal to minus the relative velocity before the collision. And this becomes another condition that we can use for elastic collisions. It's a lot easier than using conservation of kinetic energy because it doesn't have the v squared. So we use this plus the conservation of momentum.
and those give us two really simple expressions that we can use to help to solve for what our unknowns are. And that is that.